everybody, Queen's Face here from Colony Drop Cosplay. And I'm coming at you today with something a little bit different. This isn't necessarily mecha related, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> uh, I wanted to come to talk to you guys today about the film Mortal Engines um, by Peter Jackson, based on the books by Philip Reeves. I've been a longtime fan of the series. I read these many years ago on the recommendation of a friend, and I really, really enjoyed them. Um, I even cosplayed from it once. Uh, about 10 years ago, so that's that's kind of fun. Um, a lot of people are talking about this movie right now. I think a lot of people who are going to see it haven't read the books or don't know their books, and I'm actually really surprised how many people didn't even know it was a book. Um, especially considering the audience in the theater when I went was about half uh, kids 12 to 16 years old. And that's exactly who this book series is written for. These are young adult novels. So as an adult, you can read them really quickly. And it's a nice break. I like to read young adult books between heavier books. Um, so I can kind of just take a relaxing adventure. Um, this book series is great for that, to just take, take a wild ride. It's a very different kind of sci-fi than I've read before. The municipal Darwinism traction city thing was very interesting to me. Uh, I was I was all about it. Um, it's cool because they explore a lot of different modes of transportation in ways you wouldn't think about throughout the book series, um, from ice skating to submarines to drilling machines. They have all kinds of neat vehicles. So it's sort of related to Mecha in that there's a lot of machinery, but more not necessarily giant robots as much as vehicles and, and things of that nature, but it, it still falls into a very mechanical sort of genre uh, if you're into that. Um, as far as the movie itself is concerned, um, before I talk about the movie and what I liked about it, um, I want to talk about the, the big blaring thing that um, a lot of people as book fans are talking about because this is probably the reason that the movie is flopping. Um, somewhere along the lines, it's pretty clear that marketing got in there and just refused to let them <laughs> make Hester ugly. Um, Hollywood beauty standards really is the biggest flaw with this movie. Uh, if you haven't read the book, let me read you a small passage um, from the first time we see Hester's face. Uh, she was no older than Tom, and she was hideous. A terrible scar ran down her face from forehead to jaw, making it look like a portrait that had been furiously cut out. Her mouth was wrenched sideways in a permanent sneer. Her nose was a smashed stump. Her single eye stared at him out of the wreckage, as gray and chill as the winter sea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, she's horrible looking. She only has one eye. Uh, there's a great cosplayer out there that I think did a really fantastic job on the makeup, making it look more like the book. Um, this was really important to Hester's character, uh, especially throughout the book series that she was downright hideous. Um, on one hand, as a female reader, I love to have this character who could totally wreck shop and in no way was her respect from the people around her based on the way she looked or her sexuality or her ability to flirt. Like, not only is Hester hideous in the books, she's really, really mean. Like, she's so mean. Like, she takes Tsundare to a whole new level. <laughs> like, and they just took all that out. Also, with this on the other end of the spectrum, I feel like heavy beauty standards were applied to Tom as well. Tom was a mousy, bumbling nerd with big glasses. <laughs> um, and so they made him this very suave, well-dressed, mm, like his hair was great. He was so handsome. He was giving me that like Kylo Ren's handsomer younger brother vibe. Mm. I was feeling it, but at the same time, uh, these two characters were not meant to be attractive. And um, further on within the story, as their relationship develops, that's very important to their relationship's growth. And Hester learning to accept that she can be loved despite the fact that she's really, really ugly. Um, and, and then fighting against the idea that beauty matters or that what we look like has any bearing on what we can do or on like the power of our hearts. Um, which, if you've read the books, kind of ends up backfiring on everybody. But hey, um, <laughs> that was my really biggest gripe with the story. And to back that in solidarity, I did not wear any makeup for this video or do my hair. Um, because as women, we can do both. <laughs> I can wear makeup when I want to, but 
to support my protest against the beautifying of Hester Shaw, um, I thought I'd give you my natural mm -mm, today. Uh, we don't have to have Hollywood beauty standards all the time. Some women and men like to be pretty. Some don't. Like, can we get a variety? And Hester Shaw was supposed to be this character that showed us that we could have this really hideous heroine and we could love her and we could watch her learn to love and be loved. Um, and I think that really undermines a lot of the later series. So I really hope they're not going to continue and do the other films, which is kind of unfortunate because Peter Jackson did a really good job other than that. And I feel like from the careful attention that was paid to detail, the little things in the background that call back to the books, I feel like Peter Jackson was truly a fan of these books. And I feel like that was somebody in marketing that just was like, nope, we're sorry, Mr. Jackson, you've got to make them pretty so we can put them on the poster, you know? Um, and so that's unfortunate. But now that we've talked about the unfortunate parts about this movie, um, let's talk about the rest of it. Um, as I was I read the books and I was really looking forward to the visuals of this film. I did go see it in 3D D box with the vibrating seats, which I've never done before and I highly recommend for this film because of all the rumbling and zooming and chasing it really was kind of fun in the seats as they moved around. Um, and if you can handle 3D, it was it was very fun. Uh, everything from the cities to the airships and air haven even looked exactly the way I pictured them. The first opening scene, I was like in tears almost immediately. The way London looks, the upper park, where in the books there's a lot of stuff that goes on in that park um, on the top of London. And it, it looked just like I imagined it. Like it was perfect. Someone really put a lot of thought and effort into making sure the mechanics looked right. But even though it's a very Victorian feeling mechanical story, it didn't feel steampunk at all, which I was really happy for. I'm not a fan of steampunk. Um, so I was really excited to see this whole new sort of mechanical world um, it just unfold in front of us. Now that being said, there's a lot of things that were changed, a lot of things that were taken out. They really had to slim down the story. Um, and like any good book movie, I'm not going to spend a lot of time lamenting about the things they got left out or changed slightly uh, to fit the film. Because um, you just, you have to do things for film. That's just the way that it is. I've, I, I've played some of that before and it's, it's rough to decide what gets cut and what gets changed and what gets left. But I feel like for the most part, what was left was the heart of the story. Um, the locations that they set up were fantastic. Um, I was really excited about the cast. Um, the, the beautiful array of characters that lead the anti-traction union and all the different cultural aesthetics that came together to form Guangzhou's um, cityscape and just the way it all looked was so fantastic. Um, I've spent some time in Southeast Asia several times over the last couple of years and it was, it was really cool to see that blending which is really common in Malaysia as well because I spent a lot of time there you see a lot of Southeast Asians and Indians and Chinese people all living together and the cultures all blending together and it's just it, it was really ah, it's really comforting it was really pretty to see all of that together um, and to see all these wonderful actors and actresses get to get out there and do something really fun um, also <laughs> Frankie Adams yes if you watch The Expanse then you know who Frankie Adams is um, I love the whole thing with Frankie Adams and I'm so glad to see her in a movie. I don't even think she said anything in the whole movie, but just the fact that she was there. Um, just, I love it. I love it. I love her. She's just fantastic. Um, if you don't know who Frankie Adams is, go watch The Expanse. Like, seriously, she's amazing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the script itself I felt was a little bit clunky. Maybe it was the acting that was a little bit clunky. I'm not really sure. Um, it's probably clunky script. It just felt a little too on the nose, but again, we're trying to condense a lot of book into a very short amount of time. So that might have had something to do with it. Also, you can tell they kind of tried to push the rom-com teenage element thing there, which, I mean, I understand for a movie, I guess, but as an adult, it was a little, mm. uh, But spoilers, they don't kiss at the end. Bless. Um. <laughs> Otherwise, I think it was a really great film. I think the 
Bleh. I think the acting was done exceptionally well. I think the costumes were fantastic. Uh, that's not how I pictured anybody's outfits looking, but I'm almost happier with what they gave us. The aesthetic was just very complete. Uh, the world felt immersive and the different kinds of costuming really helped give you that old Dune aesthetic where we're in very different factions and we all dress differently with kind of color coordination. Uh, as a costuming person, I love that kind of stuff. So, in conclusion, if you've read the books, then I recommend seeing the film. If you don't want to spend money in the theater because you disagree with the Hollywood beauty standards being shoved in there, I totally respect that. Go ahead and download it when it comes out. But do take it for a ride because it was a fun spin to just watch London open up and eat that little town. Oh, it filled my heart with joy. Um, if you want to go see it in the theater, check it out. If you've already seen the movie and you're wondering what's up, I highly recommend checking out these books. I got mine at half price. There's a $1 sticker on the back. Like. These can be picked up very cheap in the young adult section. There's another book, there's a fourth book, I don't actually own a copy of it. Um, I think I shared a copy when I read it. Uh, but check out the books because they're a lot of fun. They're young adult books, you can read them very quickly. They don't take a lot of time. And it makes the movie so much more, like, exciting when you've read the books. It also expands the story greatly because, uh, as I said, the flaws in the story in the film like trying to translate that it didn't it didn't come all the little details and small subplots did not come across um, and that's kind of a bummer uh, but you know the whole story is waiting here for you take a look it's in a book <laughs> um, so yeah I hope you guys got some information out of this uh, or enjoyed my review um, if this is something that you'd like or like me to talk about more uh, about books and movies because I'm really into books uh, this is something I could do. I, I've thought about this a lot. Um, if you're looking for any other recommendations when it comes to reading material, as always, go read Dune. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Thanks so much for checking me out today. See Xeon!